We hear it all the time in the digital marketing world that Google Search Network is the best way to capitalize on user intent. Now what we see advertisers do a lot to capitalize on that intent is putting their keywords into their main headlines to really capture that user's attention. I'm not saying this doesn't work, but when we do that over and over again and the competition is doing the same thing and following the same best practices, we start seeing a lot of ads and ad results looking just like this. Here's one example of a search engine results page. And what do we see? Pretty much the same headline for every single ad. Nothing really stands out when everyone is using the same keyword as their main headline. Here's another example. What do you think I typed into the search results? I was looking for personalized wine glasses and everyone is telling me that they have pretty much the exact same thing. Custom football jerseys? These three companies have custom football jerseys. Same thing again. I can do this all day. Marketing automation software? We see one example where a few of the words are switched around, but it's pretty much the same thing. All right, one more example, I swear. You pretty much get the point. If I'm looking for a CRM for small business, they're making sure it's in the headline. Yes, we see the brand name in there for some few differentiators, but other than that, there's really not a lot of extra value for each of these ads that really separates any of them apart from the other. Now, I do like to test ads without using any keywords at all. I want to see if my value messages and my proof points are really sticking to that user that's going to provide a better conversion rate in the long run instead of just capturing that click at that moment. But sometimes when we test this out, we see that that doesn't work at all. We need to have a keyword within our search ad to see better performance. But when we do that, I still want to look at something else that's going to differentiate me from the competitors. And this is where ad customizers can come in. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use ad customizers to really make our ads completely different from the competition. These are ads that nobody else can replicate. And the easiest way for us to do that is to create a feed within the business data form within Google Ads. So within this video, I'm going to show you how you can do that and some strategies I like to use for my clients to really separate my text ads from any of the other ones that the competitions can create. So let's dive in. Before we can even talk about customizing our search ad copy, we need to get the ad customizer data feed template. So when you are logged into Google Ads, go up to your tools and settings. Then under the setup column, click on business data. You can see I already have a few data feed options here, but if you're brand new to this, you will click on the blue plus button to start uploading a new feed. In this particular video, we're talking about ad customizer data, but to get the template, you can just click on that one anyway. From there, we will see the ad customizer data template, which we can download to a CSV. When you download the CSV and then you open it, you're going to see this exact template. I have not changed anything. Now, even though this looks like a really concrete template, keep in mind that this is pretty much a guide. This template is not a concrete layout that you must have every element look exactly the same. So if you're used to that with a merchant product feed, we have a lot more flexibility with the ad customizer template. The custom attributes, which could be also called like your column headers, they can be updated to whatever attributes are available to your business or your campaign goals. You do not have to include a model, a capacity number, type, start price, sales ends. These are just examples that Google is showing you of what you can do with the ad customizer template. As you can see in some of the instructions in the template below, Google is telling you that you can remove target columns if you don't need them. And then of course, to replace whatever sample elements you have with your own actual product or information data. Let's go back into Google ads and look at one of the ad customizer templates I already created just for the sake of this video. Right in this initial feed template, I was pretending this is going to be for an e-commerce client. And they were going to showcase a few different models of the shoes. We're going to track the inventory that we can manually update, how many were sold recently, the start price of the shoe or the initial list price, the retail price of that shoe once it's on sale. Then we calculated the percent off from the original start price versus the sale price. Then we want to let Google know that this particular ad customizer feed was specifically for the men's sneakers campaign and then different ad groups depending on what the product is. So now I can use any of these elements the model of the shoe, the inventory, how many were sold within the last seven days, start price, sale price, the percent off. I can use these elements and pull the information that you see in front of you from this data feed within my search ads. Before we start utilizing any of this information within our search ads, I do want to go over one thing. You have the option to create a schedule for your data feeds if you have information that is constantly updating. So in my original example, I just loaded a simple CSV, but you can pull your data feed from a Google Sheets and a variety of different sources. 
I'm not pulling one from an HTTP source, but let's just say that I was. The other important part is once you have all this other information filled out is that you can select the frequency on when you want Google to go and fetch and re-upload the data just to make sure that the customizers you are pulling in are completely up to date. Schedules can be set for every 24 hours up to the first day of every month. And now that our product data is stored all in one place and we set a schedule where we can update it to make sure our information is accurate, we can go back within our search campaigns and start utilizing this information to customize our search ads. So let's hop back into the campaign. Remember the one I included within that specific ad customizer feed was for the campaign using men's sneakers. And let's just choose one ad group. Now, when we go in to create a new ad, just like any ad customizer, you need to use an opening curly brace. This is gonna give us the ad customizer option. And it specifically says right here, we wanna insert an attribute defined in the business data, which is exactly what we just uploaded into Google Ads. I had a few previous ad customizer feeds uploaded to Google Ads. So in this particular case, we were looking for ones that were talking about my cool shoes, remember? So I need to use the right data feed for this particular example, which is my cool shoes product list. And then we could see the different column headers or attributes that we originally created in our CSV template. There we see the model, the inventory, sold last seven days, start price, sales price, and then the calculated percent off. Now I'll just choose model. And then maybe I wanna add another customizer in this headline. Again, we want add customizer, the same data feed, and now I'll choose sale price. So now take a look at the actual headline that is typed into Google ads versus what will actually show up within the ad itself. Google is taking that information from my business data feed and uploading it to my ad itself. The cool shoe one, which is the product model, is only $36.99 attributing that from the same row within my data feed. Now, just to close out a second headline, let me do one more example. This time I'm gonna to wanna to call off the percentage off of this model of shoe. So let's just say that cool shoe one is the name of the shoe. And the name of the shoe is the keyword that I'm also targeting within this specific ad group. I'm not just slapping on a boring keyword within this ad. I am saying specifically, this shoe is only $36.99. And I'm also telling users that it's 53% off only at my website. Now, if the sales price of that shoe changes, also that percentage is going to change. And if I know my price can be better than the competition, I can make sure that my feed is constantly updated. So I'm showcasing not only the accurate price, but the better price that's gonna make me stand out versus everybody else who also sells the same shoe. Now think of all the product attributes that you could use to reference in your ads to call out benefits, sales, or maybe even features that your target audience will really care about. If you're looking for other ways that you can utilize the ad customizer business feed, let's go over a few options you might consider using. One way I like to use ad customizers is for building urgency. In this ad example, by pulling in my inventory numbers, I can show potential customers that the shoe that they were looking for might not be around much longer because we only have a limited inventory left. If you have a really popular product, or if this is around the holidays and you just wanna to try to build some urgency and really get some quick sales, ad customizers are a great way to build that FOMO effect. So people don't feel like they're missing out on these products and the building that urgency that's gonna get them to your website and buying that product as soon as possible. Now it's very important that that FOMO that you're building within your ads is also replicated on your landing pages. It's gonna have a better psychological effect with that user to make them feel like if they don't buy that shoe now, they're gonna miss out completely. Use ad customizers and your feeds to build social proof. We can see within the template that we're utilizing how many were sold within the past seven days. And we can call that out within our ads. We're saying, well, okay, 18 people bought this shoe this week. You might wanna buy this shoe too. It's the McDonald's effect, right? Looking at how many were sold total, it's like, okay, these must be good if X amount of people are buying them. It may not be applicable to every industry, but if you have an audience type that's easily influenced, just changing your wording right now might also change their mindset that they might be interested in what you are selling. And another common way that ad customizer feeds are used within your search ads is to frame the best prices, making it seem like people are getting a very good deal at that moment. In this example, we were looking at the start price attribute within the feed, calling out that usually these shoes are $85, but now they're on sale for just $44.99. Psychologically for a user, they're thinking, wow, these shoes are usually way more expensive than they are now. Maybe I should act now in case they go back up to that $85 price. And also, as a little Easter egg in this video, in the second headline, we're using a different ad customizer that's not necessarily feed-based, but we're using the countdown customizer to build some additional urgency, letting them know that that $44.99 price is only good for another five hours. And there you have it. 
the ad customizer template that we can upload to the business data feed section within Google ads gives advertisers a almost endless combination of different headlines they can test that nobody else can replicate. Unless your competition is actually seeing your ad customizer feeds, there's no way they're gonna know what elements you can pull within your search ads that you are testing within your target audience. If you have to use keywords in your ads, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But at least take that little extra step to add something different within your ads that's gonna make you stand out from everybody else, especially if you're in a competitive space. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos. 